Mr. Kasten. Thank you. Uh, next up is uh, Congressman Liu from California. Welcome. You're recognized for five minutes. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Chairwoman Castor, uh, the ranking member and members of the committee for allowing me to testify before you today. Uh, I am here to urge you to support two bills I have introduced, H.R. 330, the Climate Solutions Act, and H.R. 2360, the Renewable Energy for Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands Act. I believe that climate change is the greatest existential threat to humankind. In recent years, the dangers of climate change have become increasingly clear. According to the National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, the last five years have been the hottest on record, with July 2019 being the hottest month in recorded history. These records have severe consequences. In 2018, the U.S. experienced several major weather disasters, resulting in 245 lives lost and $91 billion of damages. And then we can see the climate crisis unfolding before our very eyes in districts we all represent. Last year, wildfires, including the Woolsey Fire in my congressional district, tore through California, making it the most destructive fire season on record. This year, we saw additional fires in my district, including the Palisades Fire and the Getty Fire. At the same time, communities throughout the country are dealing with hurricanes, flooding, and other extreme weather events. That's why I introduced the Climate Solutions Act. Uh, when I was in the California State Legislature, I was a co-author of AB 32, California's landmark Global Warming Solutions Act. Uh, the reason that I thought that law did well is we didn't set out and say, hey, here is 951 things we want you to do to mitigate climate change. Instead, we set a goal and then we directed an agency to get us to that goal and gave that agency the power to take us there. So we set a goal of pre-1990 uh, levels of greenhouse gases by 2020, and we gave the California Air Resources Board the power to take us there. My legislation is similar. It sets goals, and then it directs the EPA and the Department of Energy to take us there. So first, the bill sets out a national renewable energy standard to drive us towards 100 percent renewable energy by 2035. Next, it creates a stringent national energy efficiency standard to reduce energy usage and to save consumers money. And finally, the legislation sets ambitious greenhouse gas emissions targets to reduce emissions to 80 percent below 1990 levels by 2050. The proposal has nearly two dozen members of Congress uh, who have co-authored it, and I respectfully request that you consider it as well. And the second bill I'd like to talk about is the Renewable Energy for Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands Act. We know uh, that uh, two hurricanes uh, struck Puerto Rico, Maria and Irma, as well as the U.S. Virgin Islands, cutting off access to power for most communities on the island. Without electricity, critical sites such, such as hospitals and wastewater treatment plants became inoperable, local businesses closed, and performing regular tasks became nearly impossible. It remains clear that we have a unique and necessary opportunity to empower local communities in Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands to build up renewable energy systems that will remain operable after storms. Under this act, the legislation will establish a program at the U.S. Department of Agriculture to award grants to not-for-profit organizations for the purposes of developing renewable energy systems in local communities. The funds may also be used to improve energy efficiency and battery storage and to train local residents. And finally, the bill will require the General Accountability Office to conduct a study on renewable energy and energy efficiency in Puerto Rico and the U.S. Virgin Islands. Uh, this proposal has the support of Representative Gonzalez Colon of Puerto Rico, Representative Stacey Plaskett of the U.S. Virgin Islands, and Representative Raul Grijalva, the Chairman of the Natural Resources Committee. And I, I respectfully request that you consider this legislation as well. Again, thank you for having me here and look forward uh, to working with you as we tackle the issue of climate change. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Liu. The, the committee does intend to delve into lessons learned from uh, climate action in California. So your insight and your legislation will be very helpful as we move forward. So thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, I have, uh, just so you know, on my, uh, Mr. Kasten, you're recognized. Um, so n number one, I want to absolutely echo your point that we need to be goal rather than path focused. Um, I think all of our best environmental regulation has followed that. Question for you to consider and maybe maybe submit comments afterwards if you can is in thinking about places like California that have been well ahead of the federal government, how can we roll out federal policy that is maximally synergistic with what's been done in the states? Maybe push them to do more, but we're going to be rolling out these policies in the context of AB 32 and Reggie and all these other programs. And I think we need we need to put some thought into how to make sure that those fit with those existing state programs. I welcome your thoughts. 
Yes, no, thank you for that question. We need to make sure we don't preempt states uh, that have uh, gone further uh, and have uh, innovated. Uh, at the same time, there are a lot of states that have done virtually nothing, and so we do need to bring up uh, all the states uh, to uh, an area where we're dealing with technical climate change. One of the reasons I ran for Congress, it was clear to me that California could go dark tomorrow, do no energy use whatsoever, and it wouldn't change many things, because what we need is the rest of America to do what California has done, and then the rest of the world to do what America will do, and then we have a shot at combating climate change. So we need to make sure we don't preempt what states have already been doing, but still set uh, standards that will make a difference. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Right, Congresswoman Bustos, you've been very outspoken, particularly when it comes to uh, solutions in agriculture. We look forward to hearing your 